Hello and welcome, I'm Dr. Margaret. The second trait we're going to cover today is the taking on of lots and lots and lots of responsibility. You've always got your hand up, ready to volunteer for this and that. You're a homeroom parent, or you're giving the class party, or you're volunteering for a local charity drive, or you're showing up at your parents' house to help take care of them. Now, before you say, well, that's what a good parent or friend or community member or adult child does, you're right. That's what caring often looks like, taking on the responsibility for something getting done. The problem isn't taking responsibility. It's the fact that that responsibility, whatever it is, has to be done perfectly. And so that's another thing on your list that you must do perfectly or you'll be humiliated. I like to tell stories to help you see how things work. So let me tell you about Laura. Laura was the ultimate community volunteer and church and clubs and school. Well, I don't work, she'd say, so I volunteer. She was exhausted, but she kept pushing herself. So one day, I asked her to resist volunteering for just one thing. She came back and described a sense of pride that she'd actually done just that. She'd literally sat on her hands so she wouldn't forget and stick her hand up in the air at the meeting. But then Laura got in her car and here came shame. Here was the voice, you're not that busy. Everyone else there is just as busy as you are. You shouldn't even be going to therapy. So we talked. Where did that voice come from? Laura had been adopted and sadly, her adoptive parents told her frequently that she never would have amounted to anything without them. Now they were good providers, that was true, but never gave her the message that she was worthy in and of herself. So she was filled with shame. And to cover that shame up, to mask it, she worked harder than anyone else and volunteered for more and more. It was a huge insight. The work of working through those messages from her parents was going to be tough, but it would finally free her from having to prove herself over and over. Can you hear how her being so responsible was camouflaging what was underneath? I often find that when you stop doing the thing that you always do, you'll discover the why underneath it, just like Laura. I hope that maybe you'll ask yourself questions like she did. In our next video, we'll discuss worry and the need for control. Until then, take very good care.